Hello, everybody, and welcome to Marauder TV again. You're here with me, uh, the real Slim Gaby, and my two uh, co-hosts, Tim and Tom, for the uh, destruction chats regarding AOS Free. So, well, um, tonight we're basically going to just chat about the existing factions and how they fare up in the new edition, basically. So, um, we're not going to talk about Oryx because, as was announced on Saturday, they've got a new book coming out, and we, we could talk about how how um, how they do fare in the next month or so before that new book comes out, which which I reckon it's going to be in the next month or so, but. We're mainly going to focus on Gits, Ogres, and Sons, which all three of us are players of. So, um, which faction do you guys want to talk about first, do you reckon? I reckon Gargants, just because it's fresh and on my mind. Okay, we'll talk about Gargants then. And I, I mean, I know you two have been on them, the receiving end of them recently. So, when you know uh, you know what they're all about. and But I think well, uh, broad broad view of Gargants is that they, 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 they do, I think they're amazing in the new edition. Yeah, they do have they still have they still have flaws, but their ability, the fact that they're all monsters and they now all count as battle line, is just amazing. It's just amazing. I think it opens up it compared to what you could take. Uh, beforehand in, in second edition with them where you were always locked into taking a, um, the little ones taking a unit of four uh, sorry uh, taking f four of the big ones or sticking in Kragnos or something like that it's just uh, it's so much better so much better yeah they, they, they seem to be like the army that's really well catered for this edition like, if you yeah. wanted someone to, like, learn how to play the game, you could probably teach them just about anything with the game, with, with that army. Like, they're, they're easy to learn, but I wouldn't say they're, uh, you know, easy to do really well with. No, no, I, I, I don't. I, I think you do have to be a good player to do really well um, at a tournament. It, I mean, uh, that's... That, 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 I may be wrong with that statement because we've not played any tournaments, basically, but... Um, I'm I'm hoping to take them to Carnage at the end of this month. Hopefully, I'm not sure what my list will be. I, what I am pondering sticking Kragnos in there, but I do feel the lack of bodies and whatnot. I don't really know. I need to have games in with Kragnos beforehand because yeah. even with, with the Kragnos list, there's only four models in it, and it still it feels really naked. <laughs> take it to, taking a model with that. I know the others count as more, but it still feels risky. You could end up trying to go at least four one at the tournament and end up going two three or something. So, yeah. what, are, what what are your takes on Gargants, Tim? Have to play in one game against them, or have you played more? I don't know. No, that was enough for me. Playing against them, it feels like you're playing against four little armies. Like they do everything. They they throw rocks at you. They charge. They do mortals. They wreck you in combat. Well, no, they're not that good in combat, but they're still scary. Yeah. And it feels yeah. like if you can't take down two of them quickly you just lose yeah yeah and that's easier well, said than done <laughs> well it's, it's it's a bit like i remember uh, for the first times i played you wait, 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 when you said about before before the gits book you were saying that you got to you got to turn three with your little goblins and then you ran onto the objectives basically with gargants that's where when i first saw the book that's exactly what i thought it would do because it just they do seem to whiff in combat especially against a lot of like tough nuts to crack i mean i don't think there's possibly maybe there is in in the in the the in the more competitive builds maybe there will be a lot of tough to crack, nuts to crack but i was mainly thinking about maybe like 20 hearth guard or something like that when they first came out i just thought they're just going to sit there and then retreat onto the objectives you, a bit like offenders have sort of gone haven't they yes yeah a little bit but, but then again we don't know what what list people can come up with. I think I think when it comes to those big anvil units, like like the Hearth Guard, when you used to get like 20 of them, you can have a max of 15 now, which is still good, but I don't think it's as scary as it was where you don't have uh, you don't have that battalion that makes them fight twice now. They can they can fight first, but they can't fight twice. I think mainly a lot of those a lot of those scary anvil things will be in big 
god characters like Marathi and Archaon, even Kragnos. Krag Kragnos can easily take down a Gargan. All he has to do is charge it and take it down. You, want, you kind of want to fight with, with Gargan anyway. I mean, you want to fight with everything, but those, yeah. those big yeah. hordes, you probably lost Blight Kings as well, like you said. And uh, yeah, yeah, of, Blight Kings, you've, yeah. you've got all that attack now, and worst case is they're going to do all out defense, but you don't really mind because you got the Ren there. So I think I think they're in a really good place. I think it's going to be, it, they're, they're always been at the DPS check. So if you haven't got the Anvil, it's can you take one off a turn? And I think for a lot of armies and Gargants is the same. It's the big shooty units. or like you said, the big combat ones like Marathi or Archeon and stuff like that. Is, uh, yeah, big time. Yeah. I, th I think that, that's, that there'll be like a gatekeeper faction. If if you yeah. cannot target down one or, or, or two gargants quickly, uh, you just can't really beat them. And there's not, it's not, it's easier said than done, isn't it? There's not many armies that can choose. I'm going to focus that thing and do fifty wounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially, especially with um, uh, like. The go-to artifacts that I would take in breakers in AOS two were, was the the six up um, DPS six up after save, but now you just take the amulet of destiny, which is five up after save, way better. Just uh, saving saving third of your wounds every time. You're like a forty five wound argument, aren't you? It's yeah, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. There's no better yeah. creature to put it on, right? Like I got yeah, excited exactly. when I saw that artifact. I was like, oh, I can put it on my ten wound wizard, whereas you can yeah. put it on a thirty wound. <laughs> Mega monster. Well, I, yeah. well, I, I, also, I also thought for putting it on, like, uh, you quite like the, the double more crusher build, didn't you, for Iron Jewel? So, you, if you had like Tanky Banky, you could have like Ren Free on one and then Fire Up After Save on the other, because that's on a, on a more crusher with a three up save anyway, because you can make a two up save with a thing. It's just, yeah, piece well, we can get to that later. We, we will inevitably do an orc section. Yes, yeah, yeah, we'll do. Yeah, we'll probably do a lot of them completely, can not we? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just they're, they're the best faction. Well, best destruction faction in my eyes, anyway. So, but, so uh, game, as a as a garbage player, what yeah. is a tough matchup? What you're scared of? Um, I think I think Marathi definitely. I saw what. So what Marathi could do uh, could do to Gargants at the T Sports uh, with uh, with Rick. No, you can do you can do the free wounds to her every turn, especially with with because you can do it in fight, obviously fighting, but you can do um, you can do it in shooting pretty reliably, I think as well, chucking the odd rock at her and stuff like that. So you can whittle her down. But the main thing with gargants, you have to try and make them as more outputy as you can because they do whiff. They're not they're not they're not more crusher level. Take a unit off in one, but if you can take down if, if you see an opponent's army. You just want to take the more models off because you obviously count as way more. I know, I know, monsters count as five now and stuff like that. But if you take off their infantry that they can't bring back, for instance, or it, say like 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 I'm saying again with Marathi, if Marathi and you've got bow snakes, you take off the bow snakes, they ain't scoring any points against you. Stuff like that. So I reckon them Archeon as well. Like I mean, the two the two god characters, Archeon can't kill. Can't kill the mega gargants in one because of the um, because they have a special rule to stop against it di dying in one. But I think those two zinch maybe because you get bogged down in horrors because they can gargants can kill things. But I was going to say, what, what do you think of a unit of twenty horrors? Because I, I played against that last week and um, it's it's awful. <laughs> it's yeah. absolutely awful. I don't know. I'd, li I'd like to play against it just to see, because I think if it's not host duplicitous in with Zinch, where you can actually run away, because that's that's what um, there was a good uh, change in the FAQ, where the long shanks rule for the mega gargants can now you can you can now walk over things to run away again, which you couldn't yeah. do before, and you can also do it to charge now as well, because so it's, it's just a move. move. It's a move, not a normal move, isn't it? I think it's a move, yeah. so you can do it at any time. So yeah, I, I do. I do think these big god level characters, but I'll, I'll have that with a caveat of I don't honestly know what what they're going to fear. I don't think they fear 
because I don't think there'll be many horde armies out there. I don't. I just don't think people will go for it. I think people prefer to play without them mainly. And maybe that's maybe that's just me. But I mean, you cannot. You can obviously see sixty units. Uh, six, units of sixty grots. The people. The many people want to play that. Maybe. But maybe. And I'm the biggest fan of that, and I'm not going to bother. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm, I'm not really known for it, but all the 2019, I was playing like 120, 140 kits, and I'm, I don't want to go anywhere near that for this edition at all. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Maybe. What do, you, what do you think as well of, uh, you mentioned in the Clan Rats, um, there's a lot of chat going on, and I think we saw Ben Sav at the weekend play uh, Nine Storm Fiend. Is, yeah. that, is that the let me clear off two giants a turn kind of list, or can you deal with that? Uh, I don't, I, th- I think you can deal with it. You just basically, I know how to play um, the Storm Fiends because I play Skaven as well. If you get in within the 18 inch fret or the 12 inch fret of the. Uh, of the rattling guns, they're the things that are going to do all the damage to you, basically. Yeah. The wind launchers will do a little bit of damage, but not as much as um, not as much as the rattling uh, rattling guns. Plus, uh, you have to they have to stay out of your the range of your your rocks because your rocks have a range of thirty to thirty five inches. Yeah, so you can, help, you can take off those little characters like... really easily if you do target them over one or two turns. So, and then once those little characters are gone with Skaven, especially in Scryer. The, they won't have the output of the weight you think. So, yeah. and and they don't have champions in the um, in the storm fiends, so they can't issue themselves commands. They need to be babysat, basically. One one thing I've never played against Lumineth. I did think that Lut- that Gargants were like the ultimate. I, I hypothesized that they were like the ultimate anti Lumineth because they don't give a shit about like. Make, making you go, making you use double command points or anything like that. Uh, Techless can do as many spells as he bloody wants against you. I don't think that the Sentinels can do as many do as many mortal wounds as they want because they're not going to spam it out massively yeah. if you not if you stay out of their range. And as soon as you get near them, they are actually going to melt because they're so squishy yeah. against. And against I think the charges. Elon wind charges as well. Like they're not going to cap the objectives off you. You know, you no, they're not. They can't pass that DPS check, as far as I know. Not played against them, but that's that's what I think, anyway. But um, yeah, I think I think coming into the new edition, I think they are in a, a in a great place, and I think I think you do have to be a good player to do well with them. I think you do. I, I'm learning a lot by playing them. I'm learning. That you don't always want to split up you guys. You want to do power pairs because if you do leave a gargant exposed, it is easy to take it down and stuff like that. Yeah, but so much to learn in this edition. That and I, I wanted to keep running them one because they're a new army and I've run my Oryx for a bit and I knew there was a new book coming out. But mainly because I think going into the uh, the third edition that things like coherency. Didn't want to play around with that, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and and the new monster rules wanted to play around with that. So that's why that's why I've pretty much taken them up. But I've been, I was so happy when I saw the uh, the leak of that they were battle line. I was still able to use my army the other week. So, have you guys got any final thoughts on the on the sons of Behemoth or not? Yeah. No, thank one you. For... One more thing, sorry, Tim. There's one more thing you mentioned with the monster rules. Battle tactics. Yeah. I feel like it's going to take a little while, or maybe most people have by now, but realise just how important they are for writing lists. And I think yeah. Sons is going to really, really benefit from it. You know, you've got, you've got monsters, but they're not going to be killed easily, and you're going to be able yeah, to yeah. kill them. Really. So, so some of them are the little, the little man crushes because you will have them floating around. I think the little ones. Yeah. Um, you take one of them off and they'll get an extra point. But the amount of points you can gain from just having monsters is just, yeah. it racks up over a, over a game. And that can make people do silly decisions as well. As well, If they don't pick the right one at the right time. It's like I played, I was using my Skaven against Toby's KO at the weekend. Um, but for, for straight, straight away, he picked the wrong 
battle tactic first round, and that basically cost him for the entire game. He lost by one point, basically. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's stuff like that. They're, they are huge. They are huge in the game, and I, I'm really glad. In the, I finally got my GHB today, but the fact that it's got the tokens you can pop out and then put on the table <laughs> is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. Right. Should we, should we move on? Yes, let's move on, Tim. Good idea. Let's go on to your Gits. What do you think about Gits in the third edition? Well, I'm still going to play them because I always have and I always will. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're not making it easy, are they? No, no. Do you not think, no. do you not think there's a lot more... Do you think you'll see a lot more diverse armies out of it? No? Yeah, or... well, I think, I think a lot of people have, have looked at what's happened to Stabbers. Yeah, which is bad because they are the main sort of bulk of most armies, but they don't have to be. So I think there will be other lists emerging. But yeah, if, if anyone's not aware, Stabber's got a lot more expensive. Um, oh, they changed the wound thing, didn't they? They can only get yeah, plus one. one now. Yeah, you can no longer get plus two to wound. Um, and they're just super expensive. They're not even in the Allies, didn't they? which we might come to later. But, but even for other armies, if you would otherwise yeah. have wanted them, now you don't. So they're just yeah. dead expensive, four hundred and fifty for sixty, and it was yeah. three sixty. Yeah. In some ways, they have got better because they, um, the unit champion, can inspire them willy nilly around the table, which is great for lobbing yeah, across yeah. the board, rallying them as well, and, and rally as, as I think you noticed, Gabe. They, um, I think I've rallied about sixty of them against you, didn't I? No, sorry, thirty. <laughs> I tried rallying my clam rats against Toby, and I got about. I tried it for like three turns and got about two back. <laughs> when yeah, I when think, it was like four of them died dead. <laughs> so I, I think they still have a role, but they, they'll just be raw, unbuffed, without any babysitter heroes, and they can just run around holding objectives, inspiring themselves, rallying, blocking the enemy. And they're still good as a screen, I think, even though there's 20 of them. So still useful. It's, but then I think... Sorry, I was just going to say, it's crazy how much 60 clam rats is compared to 60 grots. For 390 for, for 60 clam rats. And yeah. they're not that dissimilar, I don't think. Well, I think the value comes with the, the minus one from the nets. I think that's still super useful as a essentially buffing a neighbouring unit. So whatever your, your new big thing is, monsters, mm. big blobs of trogs in my case, you, just having that 20 around him as a screen, and even the survivors can still hang around with a net for minus one, which is big. Yeah, yeah. I think the yeah. loot grind as well is like a nice, nice change that you're putting up to 30 models in it, so you can put that 20 in if, you, if you're in certain games where you don't need that screen, but you just want something hiding at that. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you, can, you can also put the loot shrine anywhere now, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, you can stick it in the middle of the board, which is a gamble. I think if you've got low drops, you can then run up to benefit from having it in the middle of the board and protect it. But otherwise, yeah. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't bother. Mm. So that yeah, that's an improvement. I don't, it's quite overlooked so far, I think. Um, well, you don't have to go right in the middle of the board. You just put it even further up than you probably would, because you'd all, you were always you're always um, baked into putting it in your deployments, like, weren't you before? So it's still, yeah. it's, it's still, you don't have to be massively aggressive, but as long as you can get, like you could easily go for the recycling tactic, obviously it's on a four up, but you can, there is like the clammy cow, which means you can re-roll it or something like that. Yeah, so, but with the, with the bingo in the book, you have to have the silly little loom boss. Um, there's some mm -hmm. tricks with him though. You can make him a wizard. You could send him up the table with the Louch on Soul Stealer boat thing, the speed boat. Okay. Follow a hand of Gork 60 goblins and buff them up and do some damage. But compared to other armies, it's nothing impressive. I need to see that on the table at some yeah. point. At some point. <laughs> because you can never used to do that. You, you, it was, you'd, you'd send them buffed up with the spore splatters, maybe some fanatics. But now you can actually do better than that. It's just more expensive. And yeah. I don't know if it's worth it. But yeah, the, the yeah. loot shrine is more important than ever, I think, because the, the main weakness is, is the bravery. Whereas before, you could inspire things here, inspire them there, loads of command points, but now you can only do it once, and that's mega. 
So I think you essentially need, you know, you, you're now only allowed two blobs of big units. So you have to be very careful with those. You can inspire one that's around the board wherever you want. And the other basically has to be near a loon shrine. So the fact that you can put the loon shrine anywhere, almost, um, means that you can place it so it covers multiple objectives. And I think that's the way to do well. Yeah, I think the same with the squigs as well. Like I, I was toying with the idea of a squig heavy list and having the unit stabbers, but the the lack of bravery is is really really hurts them. You know, I think I think you need the loon shrine. You need inspiring. You need to almost guarantee that um, triumph as well. Like I think I think if you're taking hordes, it's that's a must take. Um, but yeah, I think I think it it hurts them a lot. I think squigs as well. Having the unit size of squig herds going up to ten and hoppers up to ten just means you can't. Oh, because they had it was was it six beforehand? The squig herd. Oh, but the herd. Oh, yeah, the herd, herd and hoppers went up to ten ish. Okay, yeah. all right. So, sorry, it's, it'll be twelve, won't it? Because it'll be it'll be ten plus the two herders. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And and the squigs have lost their one good battalion. Which gave them was it double damage or plus one? Same thing. Yeah, can't have it now. But from the jaws. Oh, that, that was the yeah from the from the moors of Jork, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what are you planning on actually running in the third edition? Then I know you've had a couple of games so far, but um, obviously we know you for trogs. Is that where you keep going? You going with it? You keep going? Yeah, guts. I, I think there are goblin lists that could be good but they're just hard to manage very fiddly yeah i noticed um i think they, they discussed it on honest war game at the um the, the, the snuffle truffle shuffle whatever um, okay. that's a list that i think i think it needs an faq but you could overdose your grot units so they've got even 20 of them could have 130 attacks if you want Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were chatting about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But you need to have a lot of babysitter heroes um, and snuffler units. And even then, you can only probably cover two objectives max. So is it really worth about a thousand points to have two objectives? Maybe. Yeah. But no, so I, for that reason, just because it's too complicated, even if I'm all right with the theory, practice, not so much. So yeah, play like a troll, think like a troll, just walk forward, be hard, be reliable and hope for the best. That's my plan. Exactly, and, and vomit on the enemy as much as possible. So, <laughs> Yeah, although I'm probably going rock guts, just because I think they're more efficient um, and just tougher always. You don't have to be smart yeah. with your defence because they've got a five-up ward save. So two big blobs of them, one near the Loon Shrine, one mobile with the Trog Boss. There'll be um, plenty of attacks, twos to hit, re-rolling ones, threes minus two three so just a really solid mm. offense whilst also being tough yeah, they never get to have the units of six of them but it's uh i just think it's a bit of a shame that they don't get the uh countless two you know just being four wounds instead of five if they, if, yeah, if they got that i think yeah. it'd be a serious list like i think yeah. I mean, it, it can yeah. Yeah. my experience of having nine of them is they they, they are tough and they will hold an objective yeah. I think the key now is before you could sit on the objective, now you have to sit on the border of it. If you've got a giant coming up to you, you can stop the giant getting onto it and probably survive yeah. two turns pinning them back. But you yeah. have to do it at the border of the objective, not on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was just going to say that um, when you used to run like three units of six fell wars, your main baked in uh, defence was stacking your minuses to hit. So that's a big change in in uh, in third edition the fact that you well you could you could do it to always try and get that minus one but it's probably not worth it over over the five up after say with the rock guts is it well so when the new rules came out that was my first reaction was oh no it's all over i can no longer be minus two minus three to hit but when you look at the maths of it um you just stack different defensive buffs if you've got a ward save minus one plus one to save <laughs> Uh, they're, they're kind of additive um, to the, and you'll be just as defensive as you would have been with minus two to hit, minus three to hit. And that's now yeah. possible with the generic um, abilities. So like just your Trog boss or even an, an allied, uh, what do you call him, a war doc, he can give you the yeah, ward yeah. save. Uh, minus one, loads of options in gits for that. 
and then you can also easily get Mystic Shield or the All Out Defense. So for two units of nine Trogoffs, you can have both of them tough and killy. Another another thing that I actually spoke to when I did the episode with uh, with Lee and Tony is that there's generic prayers, isn't there? So there's like you get the six up after save one, and there's uh, curse where yeah. I it's a really short range, like nine inches, but you pick it in the unit and then not allowed. Oh, it's because it's an enhancement, it's an ally. That's right. Yeah. Can't yeah, I was just about to say that you trust me, I got excited about that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think that who's a priest in the list. I know that, well, that's the most annoying thing is if you look at the, the Gloom Spike battle tome, in the lore of it, they, they talk about the oh, fungoid right. as being a, a mad little priest and the gobapalooza as being a mad bunch of priests. No yeah. priest keyword. Right? No. And stabbers no. would be so good. Right. No, even shooters would be really good with curse because you could be doing yeah. 60 attacks in shooting, or 51, hit the mortals on yeah. the sixes, then charge into combat and do another um, 50 attacks. But you're not allowed. Mm. Yeah, well, there was, there was, there is speculation that we heard on the Great Vine, but there may be another battle tone, but we don't know. Do we? Mm-hmm. I, I don't think there'll be one coming out so soon after an Oric one, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll be one in the next six months. I think it does need. It does need FA, it, not FA, it needs, um, it needs updating with all that keyword bingo in it and stuff like that yeah. in the, in the gets. But I don't think, yeah. with, with all the doom and gloom that I've heard, people going, oh, I can't, the gets aren't very good and whatnot. I, I think some people can get them to work. I think, I think your trog list, like the fact that you can bring them back as well on a four up, like we're once they're dead. Yeah, I'll just yeah. break it. five oh, of them. Yep. Yeah. Yes, it, I agree. Despite the doom and gloom, I actually think they're better than, than ever. You just need to adapt a bit. Yeah. Well, yeah. an honourable mention for the Trogoth Hag. We've not got her points yet. Should be this week, maybe. But I think even if she goes up quite a bit, she's still worth it because she's going to be but proper keep, hard. She keeps the same rules, yeah. Yeah. No, but she's going to be 16 wounds, then she can have the five up ward. She heals D6. She's minus one to hit innately. You can then put... Uh, get her to a four or maybe a three, three up save. I think she'll be a solid thing to do with the last 500 points of your army. Because when I've been making gloom spike lists, I get to about 1500 and then I feel I've maxed out my bravery protection. <laughs> Whatever else I put in the <laughs> list will just run away. Whereas if you fill that last slot with the hag, she can be yeah. a solid um, anvil. Oh, she's a good anvil as well, because she's just survived. Like as you said, with all that, little bit of healing and the, the amount of wounds she has and whatnot and being a monster itself. So, and a, and a pretty reliable wizard. All right, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and then there's tricks you can do with her with the cauldron, which has changed. Now re-rolls uh, casting and unbinding, which means mm-hmm. she can do more mortal wounds with the unbinding with her ability. You can teleport yeah. her, do the cauldron, which is effectively plus three to charge, get her in combat easy, early. And then hopefully she'll be really annoying for the enemy to attack. What I'm really hoping for is because you now get bonus victory points for killing a monster, that people will try and attack her and then fail to actually kill her and waste that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's that's, that's what you want with all monsters, to be honest. That's why uh, you want the survivability. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> I think so. I think coming away from the the trucks a bit, I think it's it's a weird one with gets because there's definitely a list in there because if you look yeah. at. Some- all scrolls and the points, there's still a few really good units, like really efficient. Like Loom Boss and a Mangler Squig looks really good to me. I think it's what, mm. 315 points. Um, yeah, is, is he not quite squishy? Is he not just quite squishy? He no? is, yeah. He's fairly, yeah. but you've got you've got the um his profile is is now a case of okay, you, you go down to say six wounds. Um there's an ability in the handbook. That allows you to go back up to max, and then if someone takes you down to bottom while you're at full profile, they're good. Yeah, it's, not, yeah. um, so yeah. it's, it, it's not going to stick around a whole long time, but I don't think you want it to. Um, no, it's decent. I just think other factions have better monster heroes. Yeah, but I think we, we, we've yeah, got loads, but they're all in that middle. Sorry, Tim, go on. We've got lots of monsters, including heroes and monsters, but they're all in that sort of middle range where yeah. they don't really shine. 
But I think there's, yeah, there's the a really good combo you can do with him where if you give him the, the generic artifact tome and make him a wizard, um, you can hmm. make units around him fight last. Um, then you can give him the command trait fight another day to, to jump out of combat. So you can you can muck around with the opponent's combat um, and, and potentially not die in combat as easy. I think, I think it's a good shout, but I think a good player will... When you ch- when you chat about lists at the beginning of the game and whatnot, they'll go, ah, all right, okay, I know what that does, I know what it'll do, and he'll be able to run away once, maybe twice, combat, and that might that maybe might be enough, maybe to score and whatnot, but I think just everything else dies. I just don't think he has enough output to kill what you want him to kill. He's like I said, he's not a mega boss on War Crusher. He's not he's not a mega gargant either. No. I just for a stone born, he's just. I think I think he's probably a bit overcosted for what he is, and like and like Tim said at the beginning, the 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 gits points probably don't match up to what they can do. So, yeah, and even on damage, out. when you look at the gits book and assess mm. where the damage output is maximum, where it's highest, yeah. it's not him. He does I don't know fifteen wounds, whereas other stuff can do thirty or forty. Yeah. Mm. You're right. I'd love to see with potent with a potential new book. I'd love to see like him make like Mangler Squigs battle line or something like that. Come on, every, everything else seems to have these monsters as battle line. If you had them as battle line and be able to take quite a few of the Manglers, it's not a bad list, surely. If you have several of them, because you can only take four. So at the moment, yeah, I, I think Games Workshop just sees them as the fun wacky faction, nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But there's hope. Maybe. Sometimes they accidentally <laughs> get good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, No, no, no. No, no. So have I you got any uh, closing thoughts on Git, Tom? Because I know you played them quite a bit, obviously. Would you play them again at the moment or not? I mean, I'm, I'm saying stuff like Loon, Loon Boss and Mangler Squig's good, not because I think it's amazing, but I, I want it to be good. I want it out the cabinet and play in it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's, there's not... I've got too many other armies I'm desperate to play and not enough games at the moment. So it's 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 not it's probably bottom of the pile if I'm honest. It might be ahead of Seraphon just because I'm sick of seeing skinks. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by, by the, Seraphon, I think I think I'd, I'd still probably play my Thunder Lizards before um, before Gits. And that's nothing to do with strength. That's just that's just me. But yeah, I I, I, I like the Gloom Spike, but. They're not even particularly fun to play at the moment. The drugs seem quite fun, but the play styles is quite grindy. Like in in, in a two day tournament uh, environment, it's it's hard work getting like a decent five games out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's that was my journey to drugs. It was starting with you know 150 stabbers or whatever it was, and then introducing six drugs, and then then I thought, oh, they perform well. I'll have two units of six. Oh, they perform well. I'll have 25. <laughs> <laughs> what is the, is there, I, I'm going to go along with like what you said, what you asked me about uh, the sums. Like, is, is there any factions I fear? Is there any factions you potentially fear? Other than, other than all of them, I suppose. <laughs> is there any well, factions you, you come up against and go, yeah, I've got a game here. I can win this, maybe. Honestly, it's more about the player. If someone's dumb enough to just run into your sort of defensive trap, it works great. Because like, they're so slow, you can't go to the enemy. But if they come to you, it's great. Ram yeah. into your yeah. screens yeah. and your nets, and then you, they're in the trap. In a tournament, you won't get away with that more than twice. <laughs> so it's when you sort of shooting, maybe? So if you faced any sort of like decent shooting, Storm Fiends, perhaps, maybe? Uh, you face them again. I took off Trog, believe, turn one, didn't I? Storm Fiends, honestly, has been something I've never struggled with. I struggle against everything else, yeah. but with them, they sort of pop up, um, half hurt one of your units, and then you smack the rat. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think I'm up against Storm Fiends. I think even when it was, what, double double six Storm Fiends and... Uh, okay, the, maybe, maybe they're a bad the, example. The maybe some decent, like, like skinks or, or salamanders or... Um, boat snakes and marathi do you feel like the fear of that stuff again you're assuming I'd play against good players Gabe those, those <laughs> players end up on table one okay, okay. Down, round, round one round one you're up against <laughs> Doc <laughs> uh, yeah. but again this is a good thing about trogs when you've got your whole army with about 150 wounds tough 
with a ball with a five up ward save. I don't think shooting sounds too scary, or maybe I'm being very naive. And with trucks, you no, just no, walk I'm, forward. I'm yeah, it's it's more you you don't massively rely on your little characters either. Like if they get sniped off, you I know I know your truck can get sniped off if someone actually focuses fire on him. But even him, he's not massively important because no. you don't need him to bring them back. Yes, he can give them your buff, but um, yeah, I don't, even when you've got one little hero left with that unit of nine that's not near the shrine, that's mm. all you need to inspire him. Do Do you think? Do you think it's worth just taking more of the little hero just to have, um, just to have, uh, I can't think of the woody word. Uh, the one drop battalion? No, no, I mean, just to have... Uh, redundancy? Redundancy, that's the word I was looking for. Just to have redundancy when it comes to being able to do what you want to do. Is it worth... Yeah, yeah. In? I think you need minimum three heroes. Um, yeah. so, sorry, uh, two little ones at least, probably three. And then the boss. Mm. Yeah. Do you, do you think? Do you think there's a good shout for taking more, more fungoids at the moment for the CPs, or do you not think you need them at all? Yeah, yeah I think he's a auto include just for the command points and the double spell. Yeah. Um, I, th I think itch and nuisance has gone up in value because because you can only have two big units, and then if you're yeah. going to fill your army with gloom spike, you're then going to have a yeah. bunch of little ones. But with itch and yeah. nuisance, they can act as one. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, definitely. I think I think the fact that there's a lot less fight last and a lot less fight first, to be honest, um, that that becomes big. Where, where as soon as you can target, I I, I realised that when I used to take it on. Um, well, this is the same similar spell uh, on the war dock. Every time, every now and again, when I would get it off and it would be in range, it was usually just stay at the back of the board. Everything well, piling in some one big thing. It's just just dies. So. Well, I, I think the Wardock might be one of the best heroes in Glooms right now. <laughs> Just because he's got the, he's, he, he can cast a spell and do a prayer. And I think yeah. the six up ward, the one you can have as an ally, I think that is valuable. As it's a bonus thing, in addition to Mystic Shield or whatever. Uh, yeah. I think I think the six up ward or something like nine fell wars, again, it's you one can... of those ad additive defensive abilities. He can give himself plus one to cast as well, which is not bad. He can heal himself as well. He can give himself plus one to save if you want a, want a five up save little ward up. But um, yeah. he's, I, think, I think he's gone up to 85 points maybe because he was 80 points, but I just thought he was an absolute steal. 85, big time. Yeah, he's he's yeah. going in my army. Yeah. Just yeah, uh, fingers crossed the book doesn't change him and it's a secret. Well, that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Now. I'm just, just one copy and paste, like, like Vince says. You just don't want anything changing. <laughs> After, after building these cruel boys, though, I am. Um, I really like these. I'm not. Not. I hope the rules are good because I, I would like to use them at some point. Well, but can we get a great. quick orcs discussion in now, then. Yeah, let's chat about orcs. Why not have a quick chat about orcs? Before you do that, though, there's there's one more thing. I think Tim Tim probably knows it better than me. That's worth pointing out. Glim's bite. Uh, if well, you really hate playing Warhammer but still want to play it, there's an interesting list of Kragnos, isn't there? No, I've not looked at him. I, I don't like him because I feel he's stealing um, Gordrax Thunder. I'm talking I particularly about Kragnos and Loomshrine combo. Oh, the one where he blows it up himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me about that one, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if, yeah. if you, if you want to just have a protest at a tournament, yeah, just, <laughs> just nuke the table. <laughs> and the Games Workshop heats with that and uh, lose turn one every game. Yeah. Just, just walk off. Just walk off and go and grab a beer every time. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I think of the rules. <laughs> I think it's the best list in, in this edition so far I've seen. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, what's he called? We'll have, a, we'll have a little chat about Kragnos at the end, maybe. Maybe. But yeah, we'll have a, a quick chat about Oryx. Why not? I think, I think with the current rules, as they are, I think they're fine. Bone Splitters love monsters, love killing those things. They don't have any monsters themselves. I mean, Rogue Idol, but we don't know what's happening with them at the moment. I think, I think with the, with the change to the edition anyway, I think a lot of their rules did need rewriting because, I don't know, just because of it, I think. But I would like to see, in a new book, I would like to see Iron Jaw just stay as they are, to be honest. Maybe a little bit of tweaks in the, um, in the sub-factions, maybe. But maybe I not just, a Maybe what? 
Yeah, yeah, I, I, I want oh, Gordrak to needs be a changing. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gordrak needs changing. He needs to be this. This uh, it needs to be god level, basically. I don't know. Obviously, I think Kragnos is stealing that. Stealing I know. That, uh, that's what annoys me. But he, he's never been worth his points either. He's never I, been worth his points. He's been like a hundred or fifty points, whatever it is, more than more than an actual more crusher. But an actual more crusher does way more damage. It, it, I don't think. The, the the two the two weapon uh, the two weapons he's armed with are great and everything and they can do d3 mortals every uh, on like a four up against certain things but it's just it's not as killy as like minus free rend free damage getting an extra attack every bloody time yeah, yeah w- when the new book comes out that's the first page I'll go to is have they finally done Gordrak properly his command ability as well his command ability well you obviously used it in uh, before the the current book came out. When he used to spam attacks on it, everything he used it with the Gitz Creed. but now Gitz it's just it's just completely defunct. I think um, yeah. that and the Morpheus thing. It's like you're either going to use that or um, all out attack, and you're only going to use them both if you counteract in a minus. So what's the bloody point? It's yeah, yeah. But there's a new book soon, so I mean, yeah. hopefully they'll change it. Do you, do you have, a, have any have any feelings on the Cruel Boys? Are you interested or want them to be good like me? Or well, just no. to finish on bone splitters, I do think they might have something yeah. spicy, which will be the curse prayer, because that works best with high volume of attacks, and they could have thirty archers doing ninety attacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what that'll be like twenty mortal wounds or something. So yeah, I think that will be particularly spicy. Ooh, and then you've got a really it, fun it, list it, where where you need to send in a ninja priest within nine of the enemy. And with allies, mm-hmm. you can do it. There's ways to be invisible. You could sneak in behind spore splatters. There's the new generic spell to make stuff uh, out of line of sight. You can commando him up the table, get in nine, and then you know send in the airstrike. <laughs> You could almost oh, make it like a, a, a knockoff Blood Sisters Marathi list. <laughs> it's not of Marathi, it's this tiny little war dot. You know, you're trying to... The thing with Bone Splitters, they would, they have, um, you would you would try and stack the exploding sixes on it. So if you had, you can have up to like three buffs on it. So if you rolled a six, you'd make whatever, three hits or whatever it was. So you can't yeah. have that as, as the same as Curse. But you can still get a lot of attacks, not necessarily on the archers. You can get more with the combat guys because you can war, and I think I think more boys and uh, on the boars and stuff like that. They can they can get a lot of attacks in, and you, then with with curse, it's brilliant because there's certain nuts that they could never crack. Plus, you can counteract that with um, at the moment anyway. Um, one of the things that Bone Splitters does against uh, monsters is. You can when if you're in free of a monster with a bone splitter unit in their allegiance, uh, they gain a six to six to hit. A uh, six to hit is a wo- mortal wound already, and that's just. So I'm not sure if that would counteract or it would double up. Oh, I can't remember. But I think I think the value of the curse ability is that it happens through multiple phases until the next hero phase. So it's like yeah. it's like git mob used to be you could have 60 git mob archers but the buffs yeah. would be very potent in combat as well so you could shoot mm. charge stab like actual commando elite units so you, you could have your archers shooting with the mortal wounds charging into combat finishing something off then they get charged then they do unleash hell you could get a lot out of them yeah yeah no i see what you mean it's a bit like skinks like skinks uh could do that as well with their mortal wound buff as well. Like the, the running 20, 20 inches up the bloody board, shoot you with the massive range bloody blow darts and then charge you and kick the fuck out of you. So yeah, no, it's good. But um yeah, so that's 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 current oryx and uh with the bone splitters and the iron jaws. Do you have anything to add on the iron jaws? Do you think do you just want them to stay as they are or yeah, I, I, there was not much point in speculating, but I'm hoping more crushes is the best thing about them by far. It's just the best concept in the game, I think. You quite like the pigs as well, though, didn't you? I suppose. Yeah, but they've gone up in value, um, in price. I don't know. Uh, they'll, they'll just fill in the rest of the army. But yeah, double more crusher is definitely an, an army I want to play. Just because it used to be that you could have a tanky one and a killy one, the tank and yeah, spank. Yeah. But now they can both do both. It's quite easy to get something a more crusher to a two-up save with all the generic abilities. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you can have the killy stuff as well. And, and as I think, Tom, you pointed out, you can have double mount traits now. Yeah, I was say I'm going to mention that quite a bit with ogres because it's it's so good. <laughs> it's so so good. Oh but yeah. You, so, so it's not. A, is it not an enhancement then? The so the mount. Trait. So we might as well go through it now. So so with the mount traits, um, the FAQ says that you can take enhancements uh, multiple times, including the same one. Um, the exceptions artifacts because artifacts specifically say you can't take the same artifact. So okay. obviously yeah, that's a bit yeah. pointless with the other ones like spells and things like that, and you can't take multiple traits. But mount traits, yeah. you can take the same mount trait, and you can until you FAQ it, you can technically take multiple mount traits on the same model. But, um, but if if you wanted, uh, say with the more crushes, and you wanted two artifacts and two mount traits, you'd have to take two two battalions basically to give you those two things, wouldn't you? Because it's yeah, only so one extra. Totally, it, it's like paying for, for any other enhancement. It's you, you would you would get your normal one of each, and then your additional enhancement. You would either pick one artifact or pick one mount trait. It's not that you get both of them for, for one battalion. Yeah, so you could have a yeah. single more crusher list where that more crusher has two mount traits quite easily. Oh right, okay. Oh, that's what you're on about, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you, so, you might be able to fit it in with two of them, but I think you're struggling iron jaws. I, I, I yeah, think it's actually it's interesting if it doesn't. It's really interesting if it doesn't. Well, it's not been FAQ'd, so it's now legal for six months. No, I know. No, I know. But I mean, with I don't think the genuine GHB has an FAQ. I think there's probably going to be another one in another two weeks, ah. to be honest. Okay. But I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Who the hell knows? But, but, um, still can't have a mount rate. It's crazy. No, we can. You can. can he? Yeah, I'm sure it said like I thought unique. unique one. No, Can no, no, not? because unique. I think it said in the individual FAQs that um, or maybe it, uh, it did say with spells. So like with individual like Nagash, Nagash can take. Uh, um, it, it it like did it in the FAQs. It listed it with the spell laws. I'm not 100 percent sure on the. Right, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But um, yeah, just to, just to, just to clear out. Uh, Oryx, before we go on to Ogres, what do you guys think of um, so far of the, the Swan Bogglers? Models look great, rules look a bit dodgy. Well, I think there's more to be revealed yet, both in what those new monster things do. And I think yeah. if there's an ability which gives them more attacks, so more poison, um, I think they'll be good. There's got to be a wah in there at some point. Yeah. Even like those basic troops, which I think are the best models, but seem underwhelming on their stats. The moment they go up to three attacks from two, I think it's a different story. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I think the most yeah. exciting thing is probably in Big War, or even with allies, is the artillery, because mm. I think that the rest of destruction lacks good yeah. long-range shooting. Mm. Like we've mentioned with your Gargans, being able yeah. to shoot at them and add 10 wounds, 15 wounds, whatever, is a big mm. deal when whatever's fighting them is also doing... 20. It's the difference between killing them and not killing them. Yeah, yeah. I was I was looking at a little war scroll for the, the crossbow guys that come in the Dominion box. I was so into it. They have one one shot each, like when with their good shot. And I was just naff. Yeah. Naff. But, but the other ones the other ones haven't been revealed yet. The ones with a massive crossbow, yeah. it's like artillery. I think that might yeah, be yeah, yeah. really good. And you can then ally them, and I don't think they'll lose out by not having the allegiance ability as allies because who needs to convert to mortals when you've got rend three damage three or whatever yeah, they, they, they must have more allegiance abilities coming as well i think you can't just have just the poison weapon one it's so generic i think that was just generally to get them out in dominion really i am looking forward to seeing what they do whether i'll paint them up really quickly and make an army of them i don't know but i just want to add them to my force because i obviously have iron jaws I've started on Bone Splitters. I've got a big unit of six big stabbers and done a few characters. I'm uh, dreading going through the actual um, big units because that seems like a massive slog, especially with pigs. But it'll be done eventually. Well, anyway, that's uh, a, a quick rant on that. What annoys me about Cruel Boys is their thing is poison weapons, including poison rain shots. I mean, that's what Spider Fang should have been. But for Spider Fang, yeah. you, they were told, oh, it's a bit spicy, this ability. You can only do it in a quarter of the board. 
And even though the War Scroll says that the spider bows are poisoned um, and that the spears are poisoned, they said, nah, that'll be too strong. Don't let them do that. Cruel boys, willy nilly. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that Spider Fang are a bit uh, crippled by the fact that those uh, actual Spider Rider models are oh, rubbish. Sure. Yeah. Just a bit. They were right in the rocks. Brilliant models. The other ones just so rubbish. Well, as you found out, I thought the Rat Rock might be good now with all the new monster and hero stuff. I think you can still make it into a good zapper, get it up to a triple cast wizard, re rolling um, with the cauldron. I think that could still be good. As another means of targeted zapping of a thing. It's probably better than better than a mangler. What's the point? What's the point difference? Uh, not much, about 10 points. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah no way better. So, 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 so the Queen Boys as allies. Sorry, Tom. 295 for the web spinner and 310 for the mangler. Yeah, so, so back to the topic of sort of focusing damage in a gloom spite list or even as an ally, uh, you could have an Arachnarch doing 10 mortal wounds as a zap, and then you can have your Cruel Boys doing another 10, 15 ranged artillery damage. It all adds up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it seems a bit like. Sorry, I was going to say it, it seems a little bit like like when people would stick um, like stormcast shooting in their order armies. Just that little extra, like like Tom. I know you've run um, uh, the long strikes in the uh, in like Seraphon and stuff like that. Just added add some some extra. I think doesn't it gives you another thing. Yeah. But I, I can't wait to see the rules to be honest. And the model, models are incredible. I think. I'm a little hesitant. They seem very busy, the models. So I'm a little hesitant to paint them. I'm not in a rush. So I'll just see how yeah. it goes. Um, the other thing I'm excited for, again, without rule speculation, is they seem to have trolls in them. I mean, one of them literally is a trog off. Yeah. And another one is some sort of a slog off. Yeah, some sad troll on its on its front. <laughs> um, but I think there'll be an alternative build to that one with something else on its back, like maybe one of those big crossbow things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it seems interesting. And also, will they get a priest? Then I think they'll be even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 if we're going like keyword bingo and whatnot, if you ally them in because they do have grots on the back, will they be affected by your grot keyword stuff? Maybe I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm excited about them just for the troll factor, the range damage factor. I think they'll bring a lot to the grand alliance. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, I think, I think they had, and I think the destruction as a whole. I think it needed it needed fleshing out more, as well as death, as opposed to the the poster boy chaos and order factions. We need we needed something different. I think Gargants gives you one massive thing. I'm so glad that you don't you're not locked into taking just the little ones when it comes to Gargants, and you can just use the actual new new kits they brought out. And these new kits for these are just amazing. As, as well as the Gits kits when they came out a couple of years ago, to just to just update them, I think they do encapsulate destruction in different senses and different um, different aesthetics. I think. Other than Kragnos, who's a big horse who moves slower than a gargan. Oh, well, my man's fine. My man's going to be green. So that's fine. I don't like him. Get out! Get out of the faction. <laughs> <laughs> so shall we uh shall we chat about uh the fat lads now your your specialty yeah, Mr. yeah no, it's it's i, I have a game. feeling it's going to be the army i play an awful lot in at least the next six months um yeah they're good they're really good and i think i, yeah. think, I think you need to put them it's probably a bit like our at the moment where you've got the although you've got big war i suppose in there there's two very different armies, and although you put a little bit of the sort of normal ogres in a Beast Claw army, like Beast Claw and ogres, I think of as almost two different armies, like different factions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beast Claw have benefited a lot this edition. Uh, points have gone up, but when you look at like how expensive their stuff was anyway, like a Frost Lord at 430 is still a bargain because so i think it was 400 before so it's still there it's a big jump in points um it can kill stuff you know yeah, the stuff yeah. that's going to be around it's it's going to ruin things um yeah. yeah it's 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 benefited a lot um so, so ma manage my these... expectations tom tell me what the big stone horn thing can do now 
so that stone horn is doing a ton of high rend damage. Um, you're probably hitting on threes and twos with all of that. Uh, all that attack is amazing on it. Um, all that defense also, is amazing. Yeah, I'm too upset if we're a five of half to save. Yeah, yeah, five of half to save yeah. is great. You've got your um, monstrous uh, rampages as well now, which is great for them. Yeah, yeah. The healing is, yeah. is brilliant in the army now. Uh, more pots got better. You've got the priest healing as well. Um, and then obviously What's the monstrous rampages. What's the change with the more pot? The more pots a little bit like we were saying before with the gits, the, they've got a uh, plus one to binding now as well. And you can move um, the more pot anywhere on the table, like the loom shrine. Um, so it's anywhere okay. on in your territory. Uh, so again, I think they've done that universally with, with most of the scenery now. Um, okay. The problem with the more pot was always you needed a little hero at the back. And you either had the difficult decision of do you benefit from it and hold them back? or do you just ignore it and then it's it's just pointless. Uh, whereas now you can put it up the table and yeah, it might get smashed, but it's going to be relevant all the way through the game. Yeah, yeah. And and then you can use it as a bit of a, a target to draw someone to it maybe even yeah. as well. Because someone yeah. might want to do it. So you don't pop it and heal everyone up and it's like a 36 inch range or something like that when you do that. I know you have to have a, like a wizard near it or a priest or something, don't you? It's yeah. the like really or something like that but um yeah no it's, it's, it seems interesting i think w w when i played against um ogres i yeah well the first when the book first came out i played against um mr maudsley tom with uh, with his ogres i played with iron jaws and i was like whoa these guys are fast so yeah. fast with that with extra two inches every time they're hungry and whatnot they're, they're so much quicker than you think because uh yeah. I mean, with the smaller boards, smaller boards get into you quicker. Getting in there, what the thing, what I, the main thing I've found when playing against them is don't don't let them charge. You charge them. Don't let them dictate that in the slightest. Because soon as they do, is it? I always thought way. screens were their biggest enemy because they can't fly and they're, they're not like a more crusher that can move eighteen around one either. Well, again, yeah. they, they've got access to, to the levitate spell now as well, which is which is huge. You know, having a flying frost lord is. I, I played against Tom, uh, Tom Maltzley the other week, and having a flying frost lord come in, jumping over screens, you know, landing on other objectives at the back of the board, is uh, is is really really impressive. Well, yeah, that's terrifying because <laughs> that was all I had was a screen, and now it's useless. <laughs> Well, it's, it's quite a lot of them. Um, it's, it's a really small base, isn't it? Considering it's not like the big pie plate that's on that the more crushes on. No, so it's, a, it's, can't, it's can't get one hundred five by seventy. I say I've got one here. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's nice because you you can go like a heavy stone horn list, and it's quite yeah. easy to move them around. You know, you're not blocking yourself. You know, even though they're not flying. Um, yeah, and and you've not got a lot of screens yourself either. Although that's a bit of a weakness at times, um, you're just not finding yourself getting blocked in anywhere. And like you're, you're certainly not going to castle with an ogre's list. Um, yeah, another good tactic that I've known for people do with the stone horns with the, with the big monster truck build is when, like you say, screens can stop them, Tim. But it depends how many lines of screens you got because if one goes in. Hit, 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 say, like a unit of 20 drops, or whatever, wipes them out, which you can quite easily do with the amount of damage they do on the charge. The, the other one is charged at the same time. That one can pile in to summit behind and stuff like that. So they can do more than 20 on the charge. They, well, they've got mortals on the charge, depending on what you've rolled. And it's just the amount of damage they can dish out. You can do because well, they do more, think... damage, more damage on the charge, I'm pretty sure, anyway. Yeah, I think I think the thing that's going to be really scary with them, like the, there's a bunch of good lists, I think, uh, particularly with the Beast Claw side. But we were talking earlier about Mount Tree. Um, yeah. So oh, all the heads yeah. sub faction, you get a Mount Tree for every every single mounted hero. Um, mm. So that had a limitation that they've removed in the FAQ. So now you can have exactly the same Mount Tree on every model. So. Yeah. One of them's Metal Cruncher. That gives you extra mortal wounds on the charge. So it's an extra D6. Um, well, it's not on the charge. So it's just every hero, every combat phase. Yeah. 
So, so, so yeah. you know, you, you're going in, you're hitting with your mortals on fours on the charge and your D6 after every combat phase. And then and then you've got the... Uh, the Stomp? What do you call it? Like frost. So yeah. just from my own understanding, if you've got an army with four monsters, can they all have a mount tree? Or do you get one? Yeah. So, so at the moment, I'm, I'm looking at a list with... Three stone horns, uh, so two frost lords and a husk guard on stone horn, and all three of them have metal crusher. Um, but you don't need. Them, but you don't. Need, do you need to buy the extra uh, enhancement for the mount traits, or they all get one by default? They get one. By oh, they all get one in that back, don't they? Yeah, they all get it in um, boulder head, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, That's which is seems, seems strange. This gives you extra enhancements like that now, doesn't it? Because of the way they yeah. worded it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot of lot of efficiency in that, and I mean, there's even other good mount traits that in that um, the thunder tusks have one where you uh, can't retreat from them. So, so anything within three inches of thunder tusks, you know, there's a list there where you could have a, a whole army that you can't retreat from, and that will stop people rallying, which might be a big deal against some lists. Yeah, and you yeah. roar in them. Yeah, it's there's a lot of good stuff. I think. I think, um, you know, just, just last bit on the, the um, BCR side, um, you know, I know, Tim, you were talking a lot about trying to get hold of priests in, in armies and how good the, the prayers are. Um, Huskard and Thunder Tusk is a priest. Um, so you've got a big 12 wound uh, model with, that can go in close, do you curse, and is quite happy in combat. Oh, that, that, that could be tremendous. So what could you ally in? Or, or within the allegiance that has a ton of attacks in one unit. Glutton's. Um, Glutton. This is what I said to Glutton's Lee. Glutton's as well. Glutton's good. Glutton's are good. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, even, there's a lot even, of good stuff. I mean, the, even, the, even the heel pad is amazing. I can't hear either of you. Yeah. I was saying Nobblers. Nobblers could do lots of attacks. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, you can try it. <laughs> yeah, I think the coherency is probably, I uh, mean, novelers are not going to be used that much. But yeah, I, I've been thinking about putting the unit in the list. Um, but yeah, I think I think the, the footwalking ogres, um, I've seen some people in the chat talking about them. Like the glutton's going up to um, minimum size six now, so you can have 18 in the units. Interesting, but... Yeah, they, they get uh, hurt by the coherency a bit, don't they, as well? A little bit. Yeah. So it's, it's 72 wounds in a unit, though. So it's, I, think, yeah. I think it's a pure anvil unit now. Um, I think you're really going to struggle getting the damage off. So it's they're just a very expensive tar pit. Um, how, many how, many, how many points are they? So yeah. let me just check now, because I don't tend to play them that much. You're, I think you there's a sub-faction where you can buff them up. Um, but they're, they're, they do they're pretty hits good as well, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So they're good. Oh, but... so they can't, do, they can't do both then, yeah. Yeah. So you've got, you got four attacks, freeze and freeze. So with all that attack, you're hitting on twos. Um, they've got a five up save, though. Uh, so, you know, you, you're probably using all that defense on them if, for, for how expensive that block is. Because a big unit of them is. About 780, yeah. Still not bad for 72 bloody wounds, though, is it? Bloody hell. Yeah. For rock guns, yeah, you effectively it. get 55-ish wounds for yeah. um, less than 500. Yeah. So I think, I think there's definitely some interesting lists you can do with, with the Ogres, uh, with the Gut Buster side. I think um, Tom was talking a bit about lead belchers um, and spamming them, but they're I think when they were units of two, they were interesting. Units of four, maybe a little bit clunky to use. Um, but I oh, think that the spamming units of them might be really good. Because they, they're still under the, they're not under the, the new coherency rules in units of four though, so should be fine. No. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. It's just it's just having lots of big units of that are quite difficult to move around with the range of the shoots in as well, but. Uh, yeah, I think, I think there's a lift, there's a lift there that's quite strong as well. Just taking lots and lots of units of lead belches or, or a mix with gluttons yeah. as well. 
So, so I, I definitely don't think it's quite as good as the Beast Ball, but I think it, it causes problems for a lot of different armies. Um, yeah. Similar to the, man, the sort of Gargant's list of can you kill that many um, big ogres? And they're, they're pretty good on bravery. They're not going to run away too easily. So. No, 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 because they, they gain the boost of bravery, don't they? So um, when they're in when they're in the combat, anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I can I think, see I a lot. Of people... that, yeah, Go I was going to say that I think the only thing that sort of is a bit annoying with them is the the changes to uh, count as for for objectives. Um, obviously, the monsters are ten in ogres, so so you you double everyone else. But all the little yeah. um, models, the the Norn fangs as well, counting as two. It just seems a bit of a, you know, even if they went up to three, okay. it gives you some advantage over other models. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, mm, I don't know. I, I, I think because you've still got that rule. I just don't think. I don't think you get a counteract many other people. I don't think. I think you'd still be fine with it. To be honest, I think. I think a lot of players, a lot of already uh, ogre players, will still use the monster trucks massively. Oh, I know. I know, uh, I know. Tom Lee's is looking. To use them and stick in Kragnos, which which is a great little seg uh, segue onto the little final bit of uh, Kragnos in this chat. I yeah. I I think he has a purpose in some armies. I I want I bought the model, so I'm going to try him. I'm going to try him with Gargants. I think he I think he's good in the mirror match with Gargants because Gargant mirror match sounds boring as fuck. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it, yeah, it, it's it's gonna it's gonna break my heart as soon as what's it called? Because he doesn't he doesn't move fast for what it, for what he is, and it'll break my heart as soon as his first first charge you get off him. Because I've only got I've only used him in one game, and he didn't charge the monster, didn't get a chance to. He was already dead before he, before he even got there. This is as soon as you charge in, you roll the seven, and nothing happens. That's just gonna be heartbreaking. But I suppose it's 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 good. It's massive. It's good for destruction because. As soon as you roll the, the 12, it's just 36 mortal wounds and it takes off a mega gargant in one go. <laughs> I think he's just gonna be one of those, isn't he? Where you, you're in a, you're in an event and someone rolls, like you say, rolls the 12, kills a, a gargant in a turn, goes absolutely mm. bonkers for doing it. So I think I think he's he's still quite expensive for what he does. Um I think, yeah, you're right. He's he's good in gargants. I think he's He's really good with Beast Claw as well. I think I think him and Stonehorns is good. Yeah, you know, being that a little bit yeah. cheaper than Dargan, she can fit a bit more in. He feels a little bit like when I used to play Death with the the Ethereal Dragons. The fact that if you want to take him off, you just you do any sort of mortals to him basically. And there's not many things that can do like 80 mortals in a turn. And that's about it. You can you can do chip 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 for lots, lots of little things, but not like one unit. Unless you're Scarbrands, maybe in combat, but um, or another Kragnos charging him. But the fact that he's got a two up save that you can just buff to a one up and he ignores, he pretty much ignores spell effects against him, does make it interesting as well. And yeah. the fact that I know that he doesn't, he, he only he's got 18 wounds, but he doesn't degrade until like the 12th wound or something like that. So he's always on a top profile for most of while he's alive. And he can do a lot of damage and do a lot of damage. I mean, you don't want to really want want him next to your other men, your other units, because he can, especially if you've got little heroes, say in Gits or something, he can just chip them off with his own mortal wounds if some people do damage to him. Yeah. So, to me, it's I think, the I think lore he has, of it. Like, it's he's a horseman who's been buried <laughs> underground for thousands of years, and suddenly he pops out, and there's a, there's a whole faction of orcs worshiping him. It makes no sense. Who are they worshiping? Mm -hmm. A week ago, before this guy popped out of the ground, and why would they give a shit about a horseman? Like, I, I, I can't get behind for him. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Even better, you've got all the beastmen players, and they're all worshiping some horse-looking thing, and then they turn around and go, "Oh God, doesn't even want us with that bad." It makes no sense. We already had a god man, you know, bashing down windows, and buildings with his fists, and you know, uniting all the greenskins together. This man. Is a usurper and a horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
So uh, can I tell you that that that's all your views on Kragnos and Tim. <laughs> Not playing him. <laughs> Not playing him. <laughs> Not worth the seventy quid. Oh well, I suppose I suppose we should message Tony and uh, finish our fight, our chat then. I already did, Jim. You already done it. All right then. Well, if there's anything else you guys want to add to this before uh, before we clear off, no. it's worth summing it up. I think. I think. Gargant's I think, I think, really, just, I think yeah, the, yeah. Well, we tear them. We tear them. I, I think. I think Gargant. No, oh, God. Don't tear. Don't could be better than Gargant, so couldn't they? I think. I think it's, it's worth just putting it in terms. Of Gargant's and Ogres are worth investing in at the moment, and that you can play them They're and have the fun. Gits are, gits are rough. <laughs> You've got to love gets to play him at the moment and, and wait if for the book for Oryx. So. If Oryx stay the same, I'd probably put them just below maybe Gargants and Ogres, probably. I don't, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'd pick them up again if yeah. they do beat them at all. But I mean, I'm, 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 I've played them because I have, but I mean, I wouldn't play them as religiously as I has done over the last 18 months. And unfortunately, I think I'd like to see some people do well with gets, and I think Tim's probably our man to do well with Gits. I think he can uh, figure out something with them, even if it, even if it is just like going uh, left field and surprising people with frogs. Because I think I think he's right when you you deploy the trogs and people go, God, this guy's a joke, isn't he? He's putting trogs again. So what does he have? this guy? And ends up beat because they don't realise what what trogs can do. Yeah. So unfortunately, I think Gits are in a bad place. You could do with a new. A, 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 an update, an update, which is a bit sad, really, because they're not, they're not, not as, not that much of an old book, I suppose, with new kits. But do you agree with that or not? I think, I think before this chat, I, I, I would have put ogres somewhere in the middle, but from Tom's explanation, I'm quite scared. <laughs> they are, they are quite scary. They are. Yeah, beast, beast claw surprises people certainly in this edition. You can, you can just walk over, and if someone's not aware, just remove the army in a turn. Yeah, yeah. You need you need to be a quite a clever player with them, I think, because like like I said, you want that you want that charge, you want the charge, and if someone denies you that by sticking some of your fucking hate there, it's just it's going to go bad, isn't it? So yeah, should we? Should we, uh, should we be book yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and I think it will make you a better player by playing them together. Because you, you'll realise stuff like yeah. that, and then when you go to other armies, you'll um, you'll, uh, you'll you'll know the tactics basically. You'll know what what you want to do and where to deploy them and how far to go up the board and stuff like that. Um, I, I think it's kind of the opposite. Me playing uh, me playing Gargans, I don't think it makes me a better player. <laughs> I think it makes me quite uh, quite quite dumb and stupid to be honest. But it feels like it anyway by only using like three war scrolls. Yeah. I'm not stupid. Is 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 my tactic for the season <laughs> and I think we'll, we'll come back in three months and we can assess how wrong we were and you know Trogoths have uh, just dribbled their way across the battlefield surprised hundreds of enemies and um, taken home all the trophies and we'll yeah. have a full member Lee the expert cool boys player by then <laughs> <laughs> yeah we just, me and Tom have given up our armies and just gone on to somewhere else by then <laughs> when we realised we've gone to that in ours <laughs> All right, should we wrap? All right, lad. Are we done? Yeah, let's just exit it then. And then, all right, lads. Like, like and subscribe and all that nonsense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and subscribe and tune in for more content. Why not? Yeah. <laughs>